Well, first of all, you're right. This is preliminary results, so we need to be careful. What we need to do is take the results we have. We need to treat additional children, and we need to watch the children for a while. But this is potentially transformative. So these kids have something called Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It kills 100% of them because they don't have this protein called dystrophin, which is a little shock absorber in your muscles. We've given them gene therapy invented by Jerry Mendel over at Nationwide Children's Hospital with a, with a woman named Dr. Luis Rodino Claypeck. And we give them this gene therapy that replaces that dystrophin, that shock absorber. And at least in these first three children, at three months, they're showing this amazing expression. So the shock absorber appears to be in the muscle. Wow. And it does, at least in early days, appears to be working. So I, I, oh. I, one quick question on, on that is, is this able to go forward because of the right to try legislation that's come out of Washington? Or is this, is, is, you know, because yeah. are these treatments and therapies the result just of the R&D that you guys have been doing all along? Or is there a change in what the FDA is allowing? The, this well? is our R&D pathway. So our goal, and it's single-minded, is to get this therapy eventually to all patients. And that means we have to finish the clinical trial. We have to get the results that we hope we're seeing now in a broader set of kids. And then with the FDA's um, you know, participation, get this therapy to patients and the doctors that are treating them. So one of the trickiest things about this disease is this gene is so big, yeah. uh, you can't deliver the whole thing uh, by gene therapy. So you've made this microdystrophin. Yeah. Um, and so it's not known because it hasn't been given long enough. Will this result in bringing these kids sort of back to what you'd expect in an average person? Or does this get them to sort of Becker muscular dystrophy, which yeah. is a less severe form of the disease? Well, you know, it's fascinating how this all came to be. So over 30 years ago, there was a case. And it was a patient that, it was a, it was a 61 year old person who was still walking, and let's be clear, DMD kids, unfortunately, aren't walking by about 11 or 12, and they die by the time they're about 20 to 25. And this person was still walking at 61, and he had this form of microdystrophin. Uh, the middle of the dystrophin gene was missing. So researchers, Dr. Jerry Mandel and Luis Rodino Klepek figured out that they could edit this gene down, and it appears that it would still express a miniature version of dystrophin, but it would be functional. In animal models, it clearly is functional. And in these kids, we're seeing markers that say it's definitely functional. It's getting to the right place, which is on the muscle itself. And there's a biomarker called CK. These kids have muscle damage every time they move. Oh my God. And this biomarker goes through the roof. Yeah. And they've dropped by 90% in the first 90 days. So it appears on its face to be functional. Mm -hmm. Three kids only yeah. and three months only. Yeah. Is there still room for this to, to now turn in the opposite direction? Such encouraging results so far. But there's still a long way to go. We're seeing, well, we're seeing, a, we're seeing really encouraging results. But you're absolutely right in the sense that we need to treat more kids. We have, we're going to treat uh, 12 kids versus 12 placebo kids. And we need to watch them for some time, perhaps a year. But we don't want to wait that long because every single day that we delay, these kids are being damaged. And we've got to find a solution. You know, there's been, people have been trying to find a solution for decades. I wonder what you guys think about the sticker shock piece of this. I mean, that, that's one of the issues where, I, how much, by the way, do you think you guys have spent on R&D? How much do you need to charge for this kind of thing? And who's going to bear those costs ultimately when this, I mean, this is a dramatic, yeah. I don't want to use the word yeah. cure, but a dramatic step. So. Yeah. I'm it, sure people would absorb whatever cost they could, but what are we talking about? Well, this is a, so, this, so first of all, this is a you know, potentially profound therapy, a one-time therapy. We're currently focused, you know, sort of single-mindedly on getting this therapy confirmed so we can get it to the kids. So we're far away from talking about those types of issues, other than to say, you know, I at least am quite confident that if this therapy is confirmed to be the profound therapy that we certainly hope it is, that these kids will get access to it that payers and governments will, in fact, give these kids access to it. I, I'm confident about that. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.